It was the year 2011, and everyone knew this study was inflammatory as f Yay, my favorite! It was being published in the reputable Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, and what is more, the leading mind behind the study was a renowned professor of psychology, a man named Daryl Bam. Why was that so hard to say? Daryl Bam! From Cornell University, and he knew it was going to piss people off, and everyone else knew it was going to pe pe piss people off. <laughs> Meanwhile... <laughs> I'm just gonna see what Shiva does with it. I don't even care. <laughs> in fact, those involved with the study were actually warned by a science writer at the New York Times to be prepared for an outrage. So what was the study? It was called Feeling the Future, Experimental Evidence for Anomalous Retroactive Influences on Cognition and Effect. The article contained nine experiments designed to test for retroactive influence by time reversing several well-established psychological effects so that the individual's responses are obtained before the putatively causal stimulus events occur. Translation. Clairvoyance is real, bitch. And nothing triggers people more than having their most fundamental beliefs called into question, and we'll get to that, but first I think it's important to understand why studies like this are important. If we can see, dream, or intuit the future before events actually happen, that changes everything. Everything we think we know about this thing called reality is flipped on its head. But a lot of people don't appreciate the potential applications of Psy beyond winning Powerball. Okay, they want to win the lottery, but like when we really think about it, the possibilities for something like Psy, if we could figure out how to harness it, they're endless, right? We could uh, use it to avert major disaster like World War III. We could more quickly discern what is a good use of our time and what is a waste of our time. We could even, hypothetically, discern what life path would bring us the greatest amount of contentment. But perhaps most importantly is the fact that something like this can exist at all because it reverses what we think we know about the nature of the universe. Okay, number one, time isn't linear. Number two, there is a realm or realms beyond the physical, and it is intertwined with the physical. Three, there is the possibility of consciously tapping into those other realms and cultivating the ability to do so. And four, what I think is the most important, is that uh, we are most certainly not just bones in a bag of skin, where consciousness is a happy accident, okay? And that's all of the things that the materialist paradigm would have us believe. And this is why people who have had psychic or psi experiences often come to the same conclusions. We can be from way different walks of life, but through the direct experience, we all independently come to the same conclusions about the human experience and uh, the nature of reality. So when you or I have the direct experience, we experience something psychic in our day-to-day -day life. We call this psi in the wild, as opposed to psi in the laboratory. And the thing about psi in the lab is that it's actually kind of difficult to replicate, to take these experiences like having a precognitive dream, and it's like, okay, this thing apparently exists, a lot of people report it, how can we study it in a lab to either prove or disprove it? And it's not an easy thing to do, um, being psychic on command, right? If you have had psychic experiences, then you fucking know that. You're like, I don't know why this happens when it happens, but there you go. But there are some clever people out there who have figured out how to do exactly this. They figured out ways to study psychic phenomena in the laboratory, and Daryl Bem is one such person. We're gonna look at two of his experiments, of the nine experiments today, starting with Precognitive detection of erotic stimuli, because it's right up there at the top, and uh, if you start getting into psi research, you'll probably come across this one often. I've seen it in lots of places. So the way this experiment works is you have a computer screen, and on that computer screen you have two curtains. And an image is randomly generated and placed behind one of these two, uh, one of these two curtains. It's randomly put there. It comes from a pool of images, and in the case of the BEM study, a mix of either erotic or non-erotic images was used. So the task of the participant is to guess which curtain is hiding the image. And the hypothesis of BEM was that people would be more likely to get a hit or to guess correctly when an erotic image was used. And this goes back to uh, something we talked about in the Ingo Swan videos, which is that psi abilities are actually uh, an evolutionary 
thing. The reason we have them is they're like part of an innate alert system that we all have. It's essentially a survival mechanism, but the way Bem says it is this. The presentiment studies provide evidence that our physiology can anticipate unpredictable erotic or negative stimuli before they occur. Such anticipation would be evolutionarily advantageous for reproduction and survival if the organism could act instrumentally to approach erotic stimuli and avoid negative stimuli. A rule book for life. That's how you survive Earth school. You approach erotic stimuli and you avoid negative stimuli. I always wish being human came with a guidebook and now it does. They did run into one little hiccup at first, which is this. In our first retroactive experiment, women showed psi effects to a highly arousing stimuli, but men did not. Because this appeared to have arisen from men's lower arousal to such stimuli, we introduced different erotic and negative pictures for men and women, using stronger and more explicit images from internet sites for the men. That is the very polite and academic way of saying y'all are desensitized because of how much time you spent on Pornhub. In any case, they were correct. According to chance, it should be 50% hit rate, right? It's the same, you've got two options that you can pick from and it's the same as flipping a coin and guessing heads or tails. So chance would be 50%. For non-erotic picks, the hit rate was 49.6, below chance. For negative picks, it was 51.3, positive images, 49.4, romantic but non-erotic images, 50.2, and uh, sexual photos came in at 53.1%, which doesn't sound like much, but it is um, pretty statistically significant. And there was a follow-up study, I can't remember who did it. If I remember, I'll go look this up after. I'll, I'll plug it into the description, but at some point someone replicated the study and they actually took physiological markers from a person to determine if they were in an aroused state before seeing the images. And they, again, got statistically significant results where they found that people were having, um, like, the markers of being aroused in their body before they actually saw the image. In any case, I find this deeply amusing because when we think about psychic abilities, they represent our greatest untapped potential as human beings. The only reason psychic abilities work the way that they do is because consciousness is fundamental and everything is interconnected. So when we all wake up to this, finally, um, that's when we're gonna stop killing each other and plundering the earth because we'll realize how fundamentally interconnected everything is. And so in a lot of ways, this is our next uh, big step evolutionarily as a species. It's tapping into these higher abilities. And I find it a little bit ironic that uh, nothing quite inspires our psychic abilities to action at this point as much as the possibility of surprise sex. Like it's a little bit primitive. It's like there's this ringing in our subconscious, this sounding of alarms that goes. I spit in my mouth, look in my eyes, the sea is wet, come take a dive. Tie me up like I'm surprised, that's role play. I wear the skies, I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little garage. Next, let's take a look at retroactive priming. So you may already be familiar with the basis of this study. It's a well-known uh, effect in psychology, something that's really well studied called priming. And the way this study works is, again, you are looking at a computer screen, and if you're the participant, you're gonna be shown two images of equal likability, all right? So it might be two people's faces, or it might be two dogs, or it might be two flowers, and you have to choose the one that you like the most. Now, the experimenters are going to flash you one of those images, and they're gonna flash it to you so quickly that your conscious mind cannot pick it up, but your subconscious does. Your subconscious picks up on this and more often than not, you are going to choose the image that was really quickly flickered at you. This is called priming. And there is some evidence that this can of course be used to influence uh, people's behavior and decision-making, which is where we get subliminal advertising. So I'm gonna start flashing you subliminal messages to subscribe. Did you see that? Or that? How about that? Am I even flashing you anything? You don't know, but your subconscious does. But in Bem's version, of this experiment, participants received the subliminal message only after they had made their selection. And so in the original experiment, people were shown, they were flickered the subliminal image before they made their selection. And that of course would influence which of the images they chose. In the BEM study, the computer would choose the image that it was going to flicker, but it would wait to show the person that image until after they had already selected the image. And look, if our, if our understanding of things like time are correct, that time is linear and we can't perceive events that haven't happened yet, 
then the fact that people were being shown the image after they made their selection, it should have made no diddly darn difference. But it made a big difference. People were heavily influenced in the direction of the image that the computer would later show to them, which would suggest that information from the future, okay, from the future was retroactively influencing their decision making at odds against chance of 73 billion to one. In other words, fat chance it's chance. But what do you think? Have you had the direct experience of precognition? If not, do you think that there's a possibility that any of this woo woo shit is real? I would love to hear what you think in the comments. And in any case, thank you for tumbling down the rabbit hole with me today. Hail to the power and the sight. And until next time, I hope you stay very, very blessed, my friends. I said certified free, seven days a week. Wet ass pussy, make that pullout game weak. Up, nigga, catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top. I wanna ride. I do a giggle. What is inside? Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. This pussy is wet. Come take a dive. Tie me up like I'm surprised. That's role play. I wear the skies. I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little garage. <laughs>